Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 2 of Collaborative Warfare. Yes, it's finally here. It has taken a while, but that's because I've put two turns into this, and it takes a while to do a lot of the turns. They should be much quicker than this in future, but um, a few of the turns that were taken in between last episode and this episode were like first moves, which take really long because you have to put out loads of stuff as you saw last episode. But anyway, um, so yeah, this, this uh, episode will be two turns as I've mentioned. And we start off with my VTOL interceptor at, um, over at Edis' side. And I've got to just fly it over this turret and um, fly it backwards uh, and just land it over here so that I can launch something else. Because I'm going to be probably using these mostly in fleets. Now, um, this, uh, this location is quite near to the KSC mainland, and I'm not saying I'm going to attack KSC mainland, I'm just saying it's, you know, useful to have forces about, and should a situation arise in which I needed to move aggressively into that land, it would be helpful to have this here, and I may be building up a larger fleet of my VTOL interceptors, but, uh, I'm not saying anything. But yeah, this is this is here. That's all I'm saying. This uh, this is here, and it's here to stay. So yeah, um, that's my first uh, offensive vehicle out, but I'm not doing anything with it today, because I would like to fly these in fleets, as I've said, because that's quite useful. The quick saves take a long time now. There's a lot of craft in the air. Um, well, not in the air, on the ground and in space. And anyway, my next thing in my second move is putting out my extra... Def uh, my a ground unit, which is another defensive thing. This is at, uh, I think, Jebediah Sands? I've forgotten exactly the name of uh, this uh, launch facility. It might be Jebediah Sands, but I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, it's my desert runway, and I don't have a lot of runways, and this is really good because it's pretty much my most southern runway, and I really want to hold on to this. So I've prepared a new type of um, turret, which I will hopefully be implementing quite a lot. It's reasonably armoured, and it's basically my heavy anti-aircraft turret. Um, those missiles are... Um, Intercept missiles, they're made for, like, uh, and um, surface-to-air missiles. That, that's why this is called uh, tape STAs and surface-to-air. Because those missiles are for taking out bombers. And hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping larger fighters, because they're supposed to be very accurate, very good at anti-air stuff. So I brought them along. And it has four cannons. Um, that's not to be overkill. Just, uh, I want to put that out there. It's so that it has full coverage basically and there's a 20 millimeter cannon so it it's got it's very responsive against fighters and i think this is just going to be a really good asset i try not to go overboard i think we're all trying not to go overboard with our things and a lot of people have suggested we should have a mass limit or a part limit or a um money limit or something but the thing is is why that's too many things i don't want to have to think about how much my thing costs as long as we're all doing something fairly reasonable and we just stick to these more simple rules, it's just way better. It's just more fun this way. Um, because if you have to put too much thought into it, yeah. Anyway, BD Penguin uh, put it pretty well. It's just like, we kind of just want to have some fun. And if we're like, oh well, this is a dollar over, so I'm going to go for these cheaper parts, that's going to be really boring. And it's pretty easy just to tweak scale, cheat yourself a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah. So let's put this into position, and then we'll uh, probably move, well, we will move on to turn three, which was quite crashy. I had a lot of crashes. I'm going to look into that, actually. It's been a bit ridiculous. I kind of semi-blame Bandicam, but maybe just KSP with all the mods. Although other people haven't had it so much, although I think they might be using OpenGL, and my computer, for some reason, hates KSP and OpenGL. But anyway, uh, we'll put this here quite near the other turret, just so it's got pretty good coverage. Um, it does have armor on the wheels and its power source and things, so it is much more protected than my other turret. Um, because it is, uh, well, I do like those intercept missiles, they should be pretty good. And just set up, uh, guard mode, and, uh, let's just, uh, let that sit there, just as a bit of a deterrent. Um, well, and if not a deterrent, uh, I'll murder you if you get close. But anyway, it's time to move on to my third turn, where stuff gets a little more interesting. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is launch a new spy satellite, because my other one mysteriously went missing! After Beardy Penguin flew near it, and... Maybe it was in his cargo bay after he had done. Yes, he literally stole my spy satellite. He flew up, got a claw, grabbed my spy satellite, and put it inside his fucking cargo bay. He robbed me. He literally robbed me. He didn't go up there and destroy it or anything. He literally robbed me. So yeah, I'm feeling not too angry, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, I didn't realize we were supposed to put weapons on our satellites because I didn't expect people to be thieves um, <laughs> I was it was amazing though. He did a pretty good video on it. It was uh, 
it was I didn't expect it. I was uh, pretty good, and then I'm pretty sure um, I'm pretty sure Aganarch went and just fucked him up anyway, so it's fine. But still, I mean, we're not at war, but he's really pushing the boundaries of uh, me not nuking him. Uh, so yeah, I'm launching a new satellite, much bigger, much more covered in guns and missiles. I was worried about going overkill on this, and then I thought, fuck that. Overkill went out the window and I got literally robbed. He space robbed me. He performed the first space robbery. I think that's bad. I think we should, if we have some sort of UN in the end, I'm going to raise that. Fucking space robbery. D fucking, there's probably nothing in the Geneva Convention about space robbery, but still. Anyway, um... I'm totally over it, though. I don't care. So, yeah, instead of launching a new plane, I'm launching a freaking satellite. But, yeah, this is my uh, my spy satellite so I can watch enemy troop movement, which is quite important because we've heard rumors about the... Um, uh, I've forgotten the name of it. But, basically, Twitchy's nation is uh, mounting some troops somewhere, I've heard, and I'd like to check that out for myself with my spy satellite. So, this is in orbit now, and we'll get a little closer look at it in the daytime. Um, so yeah, there'll be a little bit of a jump there because the quick saves take fucking ages And because I've been uh, trying to cut up my recording quite a lot because there's been some crashing quite a lot um, But I'll I'll just try and sort it out and if not then I can live with it uh, It's usually only when I revert and things but sometimes it's during flight It's just a bit one of those things that's really annoying uh, But I don't know KSP 1.0 seems really unstable, which is kind of sad anyway Yeah, this is my spy satellite. It has the standard spy equipment its antenna and it carries eight of these like space missiles with thrusters and things and uh, and eight of these 30 millimeter cannons, so Yeah, and it's actually called beardy penguin or, or something like penguin. I swear to god if you take this again um, <laughs> Or something like that, but yeah, it's uh, hopefully this won't be stolen. I'd be pretty pissed off if he did the exact same thing again. Um, <laughs> just comes up with a bigger cargo bay. And it's just like, yoink. Yeah, that'd be quite annoying. Um, I'd be pretty upset. But yeah, anyway, we're putting this in orbit. Hopefully uh, he won't waste too much time stealing this again. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at the ground, shall we? Um, one special, uh, very specific part of ground is um, the across the water from Edis' side. Apparently there's some things, uh, you know, building up, as we can, uh, as we can see here, uh, Edis side on the left there, and here we have, uh, Platypus, Winged Mongoose, and the Turtle. Seems like there's three craft there, Mongoose sounds like a plane, and, uh, we've heard rumours that, oh, uh, before I go on to that, uh, Weird Glitch, um, spawned this in, turns out one of my turrets has just kind of disappeared a bit, like bits of it. I, first I was like, did it get destroyed? But it actually didn't, if you look at it, um, the reaction wheel's too small and the probe shrunk. And it's not like it's just fallen over and been destroyed. Look, it's just like... It's just like... Kind of... There's bits missing. I'm pretty sure that's a tweak scale glitch. So I'm gonna just... Well, say right now that I'm just gonna literally replace that. I'll, I'll explain what's going on on the screen in a second. I'm just gonna replace that and hope that everyone understands that if there's a glitch, I should just be able to replace my craft or it seems kind of unfair. Anyway, um, I was trying to figure out how the hell do I get this down from the helipad. So I struck some, strapped some rockets and parachutes to it, naturally. Um, because this is uh, Edis side again. And since we've seen that there's quite a few space... Well, f quite a few crafted... Uh, Twitchy's base on the other side of the um, channel, I'd like to put my uh, new anti-aircraft um, um, missiles down here, uh, my anti-aircraft pods, because apparently we've had a spy plane in our midst pretty recently, and apparently uh, there were some stray bullets that came near us. Apparently he took a little, uh, little, little cheeky pop at our uh, base. I'm not going to say that's an act of war. But, um, you know, and we've also heard a few rumours that, uh, along with uh, the things he's been putting at his base, there's been certain missile tests that's got me a little worried, because, um, well, missiles are really, really long range. Um, so yeah, we'll be uh, taking that into account. But anyway, yeah, I, I don't want to declare war right now, it's quite early on. Um, I thought about maybe doing strikes on, I don't know, someone, I'm not, I'm not sure who. Um, I've thought about it, but I'm thinking right now it's more it's better to build up my resources a little more than just go in crazy um, So yeah, that's what this is um, This is just making sure that Edis side remains uh, Remains mine um, and annoyingly I have a helipad here and on the other side of the channel 
Uh, to which he has a runway, which is probably much more useful. Anyway, uh, this is the new turret I've just sent to replace this one because it does look very much like it's just quite glitched out. You can really tell that it is. I mean, it's hovering. Some of the parts are smaller than they should be. So I'm just going to destroy it with my gun and replace it. I could have deleted it in the map view, but that would have taken longer and been less explosive-y. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to get my um, my things back to uh, back to fighting shape. I didn't want to just like, cheat this, well, not cheat it in, but just put it in without saying anything, just because, yeah, if there's this sort of glitch, I think if anyone else sees it when they're playing, they should just be like, oh, yeah, I should be able to put in a new one. I think that's fair, um, because, you know. So, yeah, and this also has anti-aircraft missiles, um, AMRAMs, much smaller than the uh, intercept missiles, but uh, it also has this big turret on it, which would be quite nice, and this will just stay on the steps, because this doesn't have any rockets on it to get it down, and because it would be cheating if I ch replaced that broken thing with something else. But yeah, that plane will just remain there. I took it off the helipad, as I said, so that I could launch another plane and maybe have a fleet if situations arose which meant that I had to, I don't know, launch a surgical strike against some sort of missile launcher uh, across the channel. Uh, what? No, I didn't even hear what you just said, Peter. I sad didn't sound like a declaration of anything. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um... We're, uh, we're, everything's a little hotting up. I mean, there was the, the tension with, uh, with the uh, Penguinor Empire over our disappearing spy satellite. It even said, totally not a spy satellite, because it was totally not a spy satellite. It was a spy satellite, but I'm, I may be a spy, but I'm not a space thief. Um, anyway, let's turn guard mode back on. Not scan interval, oh, hey, you are. Um, but yeah, so, uh. And it looks like tensions between Agonarch and uh, Space Game Junkie are rising as well, since uh, Space Game Junkie attacked one of uh, Agonarch's bases. Anyway, um, for the end of this video, I'll be moving into a simulation uh, save, let's say. This has, uh, this isn't uh, in the actual game, I just thought I'd run some tests, and I thought I'd leave them in. This is a missile test, funnily enough. And I'm launching from uh, KSC2, and I thought, ah, random base, let's pick, uh, pick Black Crags. Um, which just happens to be across the channel from Edis' side, my uh, my my hotly contested base. So uh, we're just gonna take off. Um, I didn't build this in the way it was to be, you know, bigger than any other missile someone else may have built. I just, you know, I I, I just build it. Um, so yeah, we're launching from our uh, launch facility because our missiles are so big they need a launch facility. <laughs> yeah, twitchy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nothing. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna launch. Just see see the kind of range on this. See, uh, I had no idea about the range. Um, but anyway, I will speed through it in a little bit because it did take a little while to uh, get up to speed. But it's just one stage, just carrying something, just, you know, just resources. It's an aid missile. It's got food and shit in the fairings. Not three warheads. Definitely not three warheads. It's an aid missile. Um, so yeah, we're going to uh, fly that over there. Uh, just, just... She just pointed at, you know, Black Crag. Seems like a pretty good target. Oh, it just, just passed Black Crag. So it looks like it might be able to hit that. Oh, and, oh, that's almost at the KSC. This seems to be uh, pretty capable of striking this continent pretty much anywhere from my uh, my launch facility. Um, seems like a pretty uh, pretty useful uh, pretty useful missile. It actually did go to the edge of space as well. However, on the way down, we do lose some fins, which makes it kind of unstable. You can see their basic fin burnt off. And then it kind of spins out a bit. So this missile, not super effective. But if I improve the stabilization and such, uh, maybe just attach the engine, I think might work. Um, it will be able to pretty much strike anywhere on this continent. Um, just arbitrary continent, not too, uh, not too important. Oh, and we uh, detach it and you can see that this one has uh, three warheads instead of just the one that uh, other nations tend to use. Um, yeah, this is just... Uh, Th three warheads, you know, just just cause. It is coming down the wrong way to cause any damage, of course, because we want to get those warheads back for, uh... Uh, I don't know, nothing. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, I do like this missile. Um, if you guys have no idea, didn't watch Twitchy's video, that's where a lot of this, a lot of what I said came from. But anyway, yeah, that is that. That's uh, hopefully going to be a useful tool if ever we need to launch a missile. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been uh, Collaborative Warfare Episode 2. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.